All right, the Bears now have a GM coach tandem in place. Ryan Poles, their, their new general manager, and he has hired Matt Eberflus, the defensive coordinator for the Indianapolis Colts. Colts had a top 10 scoring defense in three of the last four years. So a little opposite Joe going on here. Had an offensive guy. Um, now they go with a defensive guy. And as you know, defense is, is what they do in Chicago for the most part. Um, so the offensive coordinator is going to be a, a big topic of discussion because Justin Fields seems to be the future there at quarterback, or at least he was the last administration's future there at quarterback. Um, so you can't make any uh, assumptions or any certain statements about uh, about his standing with that organization. Uh, what do you think of this hire, Mike? Yeah, I like it. I like it. You know why? Um, hmm. It was it was unpredictable in a way. I, I'm glad. Now, see, this is what I do like. Now, I'm talking about the Broncos and hiring somebody because you, you got a chance of, of getting Aaron Rodgers, even if it's like a 10% chance. Why not? Shoot your shot. In this case, you know what happens uh, a lot of times in sports. You notice this, Mike. You covered sports for a long time. Okay, uh, in, in football, one coach is an offensive guy, and then uh, the the offense is is fine, but the defense breaks down. So your next guy is a defensive guy. Yeah. You go back and forth. Oh, one guy's a, one guy's a player's coach. The next guy's a disciplinarian. That and disciplinarian. Yeah. Right. This is what we need. In this case. Yeah. I really thought they were going to find a, an offensive. I thought they'd go with an offensive guy, even though Brian Flores was mentioned. I didn't really believe it. I was thinking, oh, they're going to get somebody to work with Justin Fields. They're going to get an offensive guy, and and that kind of limits the field. I would much rather organization go find somebody who can who can do everything and is look understands that the young quarterback has to be developed but made his bones on defense. And if we can take it to another level, I'd much rather if, if it's me, I don't want you to call yourself an offensive guy or a defensive guy. I'm about to say, I'd I don't care about you your say, background. Yeah, I don't care about I, your background. Well, I, I want do. you to be a leader. I would not want you I, I want I your to be background a leader. as a leader. Yeah, but I want you to say I, I like guys who hey, I've worked on offense. I have worked mm. on defense. Uh, okay. Hey, I was an intern. I was an intern in the front office. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I used to be a gopher too. I, I do everything. I can relate to people. I can relate to your stars. I can relate to the, the last guy on the roster. I can do it all. So like a Brian I, Flores I, I type? Because there's not a lot Brian of guys Flores. that have, that, have, that have bounced around an organization, both sides of the ball, or upstairs or downstairs. There's not that many guys that do that. Usually they, but they I'll tell climb you, the ladder. To coordinator on one side of the ball. I'm saying just give me a guy who's a CEO. Give me a guy who can relate to players who can bring people together. Give me a guy honestly well, more than anything. You know what the head coach needs to do more than anything more than anything. Yeah, manage the damn game manage the clock. Yeah, if you give me a head coach with a, with a clock with, with, that can manage the clock and could keep everybody pulling in the same direction. Your coordinator's job is to come up with game plans. If you got an expertise well, that's well, gravy. Well, we kind of saying the same thing kind of I think here's the difference. I agree with you CEO. Yeah, give me that guy. Give me the leader. Give me the guy who can really just bring it all together. But I'm saying I want a CEO who once worked in the mail room. Okay, I want a CEO who has seen a lot on his way to the top and you're sure. saying hey, give me that CEO type that CEO personality, but I'm just thinking I need a CEO to understand what I'm going through hey, to be able to put put it himself or herself uh, in, in my shoes for a second to understand. Okay, this is how he's seeing it. This is how he perceives it, but I know how I know how to speak to him. Okay, put, put it this way when uh, when you're doing old school, old school, old school, the game has changed, but old school linear TV. Mm -hmm. Did you really did you really I, I, I mean, it's great to have a boss you can sit down and talk to and vibe with. But a boss who knows what you've done and who's actually done it, uh, or oh, that's has very taken rare. a lot of t a lot of time. <laughs> I know. Well, yeah. Well, and, 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 and guess what else do. is rare? They think they understand what we else, do, but they, they don't understand what we do. Guess what else is rare? A great boss. I mean, a really great one. And so yeah. I, that's a long way of saying I like this guy. I, I think he did a really good job under difficult circumstances. If you remember. 
He wasn't hired by he was Frank Josh Wright. Mc, he was Josh no. McDaniels' guy. Yeah. Josh McDaniels. Josh McDaniels, yeah. guy. Josh McDaniels yeah. hired him. He's there in yeah. place. Really good staff. Hey, Josh did a good job putting together a good staff that you didn't go dance yeah. with. Yeah. He's got hired by McDaniels. Here comes Frank Reich. And he really, along with that staff, that staff has done, a, I'm not going to say excellent job because they never won a division. I want to point that out. And they mm-hmm. missed the playoffs this year because they lost to Jacksonville. But he's done a good job with that defense, and I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that he will do a good job in Chicago, uh, just kind of coming Again. in with, with his approach and his sensibility. Same, same thing. Look, Bill Polian's had his hands on his process. You know, Ryan Poles coming from Kansas City uh, is now the yep. general manager. Um, you know, I, again, I'm trying my best to trust the process and to give these people a chance, regardless of who you think is the hot guy or the name or got the resume. Mm-hmm. It's like whatever goes on in these interviews. Hopefully they're seeing something from an organizational lens. Let's not leave out special teams coaches either because they often make excellent head coaches. See John Harbaugh. John Harbaugh. Uh, yeah, in, in Baltimore. Out. Hey, you know, who, you know, who we need to call about Matt Eberflus. Um, so he was in college for a long time. He was at uh, Toledo. He's at Missouri. He broke into the league with the 2009 2010 Cleveland Browns as a linebacker coach. We need to call our boy Eric Mangini. See what he says Mangini. about Matt. Yeah. So then from there he went to Dallas and we and we got to know him when he was in Indianapolis the last four years. So so we'll see. We'll see. Um, but what's as interesting as who the Bears hired for purposes of our conversation is who they didn't hire. So reportedly uh, the Bears also considered Jim Caldwell and Dan Quinn. I hope the Bears consider Jim Caldwell report is not simply for optics. Huh. But okay. it, Dan Quinn is interesting because not long after uh, Dan Quinn, who make sure I get this right, he interviewed with the Bears, he interviewed with the Broncos, he interviewed with the Dolphins, the Giants, and the Vikings while refusing to interview with Jacksonville. Dan Quinn decided to go back to Dallas and say, yeah. you know what, I'm going to just stick around in, with the Cowboys and continue coaching that defense after he did such a fantastic job uh, this past season with the talent that he's got there, which I like. I like for Dan Quinn. I think that's smart. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because I don't see his stock provided. You know, this year wasn't a fluke, and with Michael Parsons and Trayvon Diggs and Demarcus uh, Lawrence, it's, it's hard to Lawrence, think yeah. that it is. Right. Yeah. I I don't see his stock going down. He's been a head coach in the past. He's taken a team to a Super Bowl. He's a really good coordinator, both Seattle and now in Dallas. I, I think he'll have his options next year. Um, you know, regardless of what happens, um, you know, this year, well, not regardless of what happens. I'm, I'm confident that he'll be a hot candidate next year, same as he was this year. The right opportunity just doesn't seem to be there. And going back to be the Cowboys defensive coordinator ain't a bad gig. Right, right. You know, Mike, although you're st- although uh, except for the, except for the small detail that your staff is kind of on the clock. <laughs> just other than that, your head coach might not be around. Right. Past that. Other than that, it's a pretty good gig if you can get it. Well, Mike, I, I got to tell you, uh, and I'll be, I'll be honest with you, I'm honest with the family, as we always are on this show, always uh, telling the truth, uh, or the truth as we see it. So, when I first heard about this, I was really confused. I was really confused. I was like, man, what, what is Dan Quinn doing? I mean, it's like a layup. It's like a layup. He can go out there. He can get any any one of these jobs. He's going to get can one he? of these jobs, and if he gets, what is he though? He gets one is of these, he though? Was well, he guaranteed to get one of these gigs? One. Of I mean, them, as yes. hot a candidate as he is, and, and he interviewed everywhere. Yeah. I don't well, know about that, Mike. How's that? Okay. How's a hot can? Well, then I'm not a hot. Don't call me. Hey, who, who, well, then okay, talk to right your there. editor. Talk to your we editor. Assume, Stop calling me a Mike. hot candidate. <laughs> We assume because he's been a head coach and because he led a Dallas defensive resurgence that Dan Quinn was going to get a job. That doesn't mean he was guaranteed to get a job. You know what I'm saying? We just talked about the fact that Nathaniel Hackett is going to Denver where a lot of people thought Dan Quinn would go and Matt Eberflus is going to Chicago. So I, I mean, yes, it seemed like he would get a job. But if you're Dan Quinn, a bird in hand it might be better than two in the bush in this case versus hanging yeah, out and waiting. And I, and that's, Meanwhile, I guarantee you, Jerry and Stephen Jones was like, "Yo, dog, uh, we got to move here. What, what you doing? You, you, you're coming or you going?" Well, that's why I said. That's why I said at first. Okay. At first, I was a little confused by it, but thinking about it a little bit more, 
<laughs> you my you my dog. You know what I'm saying? Okay, right, I get it. I get it. Oh, I get it. I yeah, get yeah. It. I get it. Yeah, yeah. So, so thinking about it, thinking about it a little bit more. Um, yeah. And this hiring process, man, this is great. This is a fascinating story, and I, you know, two. You know, I was gonna say football nerds, but just two nerds, really, no qualifier. Two nerds like us yeah. really yeah. can really get into it, and it is yeah. what happens. What happens for the public? What you gotta do for the public, and then what happens for real? So you just referenced it with Jim Caldwell. You said, "I, I hope the interest in Jim Caldwell was real, yeah. and not just." Hey, taking right. care of business. So they're same as you know, all we these know interviews they're like they're required to do with minority yeah. candidates. Same thing. There are yeah. like I was gonna say there are two NFLs. There are like five NFLs going on. Like there's the there's the outside wall, then there's the inner wall, and then you keep going in. There's a shat- the shadow get, NFL. Yeah. yeah. Then you really get to the, what the league is. So the perception, Dan Quinn. People did want Dan Quinn. They wanted it out there that they were interested in Dan Quinn. But. Maybe he started to look around and found that the people who wanted to talk to him out of the five or six that wanted to talk to him, one or two were really passionate about hiring him and letting him come in and run his own operation. The yeah, way that's he exactly saw it. right. So look, the so, perfect so fit dog, wasn't we're there. interested. We're interested in you. We're interested in your profile, right. but we don't want right. the real you. So you start coming right. in and you say, Hey, here's my vision for the organization. This is what I sure. like to see on offense. This is what I want to see on defense. It, this is how I want our training to work. The whole simpatico. thing. Is there a simpatico right. with the general manager? Do you have a voice in personnel? Does he want a voice in personnel? Who are your coordinators? All These that. are my coordinators. That's not who we got in mind. Yeah, absolutely. Which is why it makes sense for him to go back yeah. to Dallas. Yeah. If you ain't got All the right. perfect opportunity, so, go back to Dallas. And here's the other thing. Perfect opportunity. And Josh McDaniels can relate to this too. And and, I, I, and I, I'm hopeful that, hey, this will be my life one day too. This will be my life. That you're making, so Josh McDaniels is, gonna, is the highest paid offensive coordinator in football. Dan Quinn is going to be the highest paid defensive coordinator in football. So, he's going to get a raise? Most of these guys get, based, he's getting a raise from his current well, contract? I, you know something? You're breaking I, some news? I think. Yeah, I think he might get a little something. Plus, plus he's okay. got money coming from the Falcons. Oh, from the Falcons. Yeah, he's still getting. So, yeah. well, well, that's offset. So, though. yeah, okay. it's offset, offset. Yeah. But yeah. this is what I'm. This is where I'm getting at. If you're making so much money, you can just kind of sit back and say, "Well, I don't know about that." Yeah, hey, that needs to be perfect. I'm just not gonna right. jump anywhere. I'm just not gonna Correct. run and and take a job so I can be a head coach. So imagine the, the power that you have or the good feeling that you have the security that know the bills are being more than paid bills are paid. Mama's happy. Kids are happy vacation. Hey, and, I, and I'm not saying that's you. his story, but you know, I'm yeah. saying I'm, I'm, I'm putting myself in there now. <laughs> Michael, let me and, say and you something. don't really the, have to jump in any opportunity. The best two decisions I made in the last three, four years was leaving two jobs. Ain't nothing more, ain't nothing more liberating than saying no. The only real Ooh. leverage you have is walking away. And so absolutely, like, especially if you've been, Say it again. Uh, if you've been, a, ain't, ain't nothing. Say it again for the people up top. The only, le- the only leverage you really have is your willingness to walk away. And there's nothing more liberating than saying, no, I don't need this. Especially if you've been a head coach once before, you know exactly what it needs to look like the next time around. So take your time, yep, playboy. Yep, yep. Take your time. Mm. Makes sense to Must me. Must be nice. It, it didn't earlier today, but it does now. Yeah. Now, it don't really work like that for the bros, but that's another conversation. <laughs> yes, it does. It'll work like that for us. Hey, thanks for watching brother from another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.